everyone! Welcome to part four of the Lolly and Grace needle painting stitch along. And I hope everybody had a great time uh, last time in part three working on all of this needle painting for the petals. And then the lesson, uh, the part before that was the leaves. Um, what we're going to be working on for part four is the center right here. So this is quite a bit different from what we were doing with all of this needle painting. It's going to be a really interesting and cool stitch. And then we're going to do uh, French knots for the center. So let me talk about the first stitch we're going to do and the two rings around the outside of the center. It's called turkey work. Uh, it all, it's also called the Giordis knot. I tend to just think of it as the fringe stitch. The reason it's called turkey work is because I believe it's based on um, the knots that were used for uh, Turkish rugs. So what you want to do is uh, you can use any number of strands for this demonstration. I'm using three strands. You do not need a knot in the end of your thread, so just leave it unknotted. And how you start, uh, it's really going to be sort of a row of loops that go across and then we're going to trim them. So to start out, you're going to go down into your fabric and then leave a tail. Now you're going to want to know ahead of time how long you are going to want your fringe. I think the fringe on the center of our, this, this, the one ring, the outside ring of the center is going to end up being about a quarter of an inch. So I'm going to just make sure that whatever I, all of the loops that I leave are going to be longer than that so I can trim some off. But anyway, you start out by going down into the fabric, uh, leaving a tail, come up at the bottom of that stitch and you're going to make, whoops, pulled it all the way through. Got to hold on to it. All right, let's try again. So there's that. So you come to the bottom of your, that first stitch on the line and you make a little locking stitch. So you really just make a teeny little stitch right across the bottom like that. Now for the next stitch, I'm going to come up in the center of that little locking stitch that I made right next to the thread that's, that just went down. I'm going to come up and now I'm going to hold a loop like this. I'll hold it with my fingers but that's what it's going to look like. I'm trying to keep my fingers out of the way. So I'm going to hold a loop and I'm going to come down or go down right really close to the where that other stitch ended. Not going to pull it all the way through get those strands a little bit straightened out. They do not want to get straightened out, do they? Hang on. All right. Now, there's my first loop, and it's about a little more than a half an inch, and I know I'm going to be trimming all of this uh, fringe off to about right there, so that's plenty of extra to leave. So again, hold that out of the way, come down to the bottom, where it goes down into the fabric, and again, make a little tiny stitch right across that, where that thread goes back in to hold it in place. Same thing. Come up right next to where that previous thread went down. Hold your loop. Go down right next to the stitch, the previous locking stitch. And make your little locking stitch across that thread. I'll do it one more time. So there's some loops. I'm going to do it one more time. Come up where that thread, previous thread went down. Hold a loop out of the way. Go down right next to where the previous locking stitch was. And now make, whoops, I yanked it from the back. Pull that loop back up. This is the part where you don't want to pull too hard because you'll pull that loop too small. If you do, it's all right. Just pull it back out a little bit. Now I'm going to make this locking stitch right there. So you can see that I am not being super careful about how high all of my loops are. I just want them to be longer than I eventually want my fringe to be. If you were doing this stitch and you wanted to leave it as loops, uh, you know, decorative loops for whatever reason, uh, you'd be more careful about all of them being the same. But since I'm going to just whack these off at the end, 
uh, just so long as they're longer than what I want them to be eventually. So let me work a few more stitches. Do my locking stitch right there. Do another loop. Come down really close to the previous locking stitch and then make another locking stitch across the bottom of that one. Do maybe just a few more. Whoops. Came up in kind of the wrong place. Let me do one more on this row. Hold the loop out of the way and make a locking stitch. Ooh, did it again. Pull that loop too far. Let me just pull it back out. All right, there's the locking stitch for that one. So if that's all I wanted, what I would come, to, come do now is just trim it off with scissors. But I want to make a double row so that this is particularly kind of a much thicker um, fringe. So I will, you could knot that on the back. I'm just going to pop over here. I'm going to come back across. I'm going to start back over here on the left and do the same exact thing. Hold that loop out of the way. Whoops, sorry. Yep, go right down right next to it. And make a locking stitch. That row was a little different because I came, instead of going down into the fabric first, I came up. So I'm going to make a little locking stitch for, for that first, where that thread comes out of the fabric. If you had stopped your thread and started over just like you did on the first row, you would do it just like you did the first time. But I just want to make sure that that thread right there, this one right here, doesn't get pulled through. So I just put a little locking stitch on it. So I will keep making loops and locking stitches, holding those loops out of the way. There's my locking stitch. Now when I am going to do the, um, the center of the flower, I think I'm going to use more strands. This was three strands. I think I'm going to use six strands so that the fringe, the you know, the fringe around the center of the flower is a little bit thicker, but I just wanted you to be able to see it a little bit better. Make a couple of more loops. Let me do one more. And lock that one in place. All right, so there's all my fringe, all my loops. You can see how they're all random lengths. Doesn't matter though, like I said, because I am going to be trimming them off. So I'm gonna sort of get them kind of lined up so they're not going all wonky different directions. All right, so I would uh, knot my thread on the back to hold it, but what I'm gonna do now is just give it a haircut. So make sure you know how long you want your fringe to be. Like I said, I think these are going to be, let me just kind of aim for about oh, a quarter of an inch. And get that out of the way. And there's my fringe. Get the little... Now, isn't that fun? Now you can trim on it a little bit. Be careful, because sometimes it's easy to kind of keep trimming and suddenly it's like way shorter than you wanted it. So don't over trim it and suddenly realize you've trimmed it too short. So always maybe when you first trim it, maybe trim it a teeny bit longer than you want. But anyway, that's not that big of a deal. Trim that one off a little bit shorter. Get all that fuzz off. All right, so... The fun thing about this stitch is if you leave it like this, if you sort of leave it alone, the, 
the threads stay kind of shiny and satiny like that. You can take your scissors and you can actually, you can take a little comb, you can actually sell a little wire comb. The, the more that you keep sort of agitating this these threads, the more you keep working them, you can kind of do it with your fingernail. If you keep working this, the more you keep working it, the fuzzier it's going to get. It's going to get fluffier. And if that's the look you're looking for, it's really kind of fun to see it sort of change. If you just want it to stay look more separated threads, a little more satiny, then don't continue to mess with it. But yeah, I think you can kind of see, I'm also kind of getting, I got a little extra length there. You kind of pull out this fuzz too, and you get rid of that. But I think you can sort of see how it's getting fuzzier, especially on the ends. The more you mess with it though, the fuzzier it's going to get. So if that's the look you're looking for, that's really fun. So I think on our flower, I am not going to fuzz it up quite that much. I want it to be a little bit more distinct. But um, that's just in case you ever want to use that stitch again. It's really, really a cool stitch. So that's turkey work, also called the Giordis knot. I personally call it the fringe stitch, too, in my head. Now, the other stitch we're going to work on is the French knot. And French knots are one of my favorites. Some people either love them or hate them. A lot of people love them. A lot of people could like them, but they find them a little bit frustrating. So let me see if I can give you a couple of hints about French knots. So same thing for this particular one, I'm using same thing, three strands. You can use different numbers of strands for French knots and the number of strands you use will determine how big or small the French knot is. Also, when you wrap the needle, however many times you wrap the needle can also influence how big the knot's going to be. So it's a combination of number of strands and how many times you wrap the needle. So let me show you what I'm talking about. To make a French knot, this thread actually does have a knot in the end of it. Unlike the turkey work up here, the fringe stitch was unknotted. This one is knotted. So I'm going to come up, pull my thread all the way through. Now, I hold it with my left hand. I bring my needle in and I'm going to wrap the thread around the needle a certain number of times. So here's the key. You do not want to wrap it so tight that it's you're strangling the needle. It's too tight. And you don't want to wrap it so loose that it's just crazy town. You want it to be loose enough that it will kind of easily slide on the needle but not so loose that it's just kind of all over the place. So I'm going, I've got three strands, I'm going to start out wrapping twice, one, two, holding the tension on this thread just a little bit, I'm going to put the needle back down, not exactly in the same hole, but really, really, really close to it and go down. So I'm going to put my needle down, so before I bring it all the way through, Here's the thing that can really help you make your French knots successful. Don't just let go of that thread. Give, hold on to this thread right here and give it just a little tiny bit of tension. Don't yank on it so hard that you, again, you've choked up on the needle. Give it just a little bit of tension, just so it sort of stays straight. I tend to think of it that way. Push the needle down and pull it through. Your needle should go smoothly through that knot and as I pull the thread through, I kind of hold it with my left hand until it gets there, and there's my first French knot. So let me show you that again. Pull the thread all the way up, hold it with this, these two fingers, wrap once, twice, oh, kind of lost it, one, two, go down right next to where you came up, slide that knot towards the fabric putting a slight bit of tension right here, but not so much that the needle is won't go through the, the knot you formed. Hold on to that thread as it goes through, and then there you are. So now let me show you one. I'll wrap it four times. One, two, three, four. 
go down. Still holding that little bit of tension in that thread. So maybe you can see how that knot is bigger than the ones above it. Let me show you one where it is wrapped once. One time, go down, pull the a slight bit of tension, and there's a much smaller knot. So, let me see. What else is there about French knots? They're super fun. Let me do one. One, two, three, four, five, six. Sometimes the more wraps you get, it gets a little unwieldy. So let me, well, let me try that one. A little bit harder to pull it through, but it worked. Yeah, I wouldn't really do six wraps. If I wanted, a, it, it's a little bit long. See how it kind of wobbles like that? If I wanted a bigger knot, I would use more strands and wrap it fewer times. So let me show you a mistake that often happens. You come up, and this is if you wrap it too tightly. One, two, let's say I'm going to do three. So I'm like really choking up on this thread right here. It's like barely getting, you know, so now I'm really pulling hard. So when it comes time to pull this needle through, I have a really hard time. Another problem, really the tension is the biggest issue I think people have with their French knots. It's, it's finding just that right amount of tension. Is too, maybe if you're doing it too loose, and, you, and if you don't slide those wraps down, you just end up with kind of a mess. See how that didn't form a knot? So the problem there was that I didn't, one, two, three, I didn't keep these wraps sort of close to the needle. They were all, they were loose like that. I do want to pull them just enough that they kind of get up on the needle. The needle can still slide. I'll slide it down towards the fabric, holding the tension, pull this through. All right, and there's a perfect little knot. Sometimes, it, if you're trying to use a needle, let me show you the needle I'm using. If you're trying to use an embroidery needle, do I have one nearby? That is a huge needle, like this one, can you see the difference in the eye of this needle right here? See how it's a huge eye? Sometimes, a, or, and if you're using a, a needle that has a, like an even bigger eye than that, sometimes it's hard when you're pushing that needle through to pull that big eye through the wraps like that. So uh, you can get, you can do French knots with what's called a milliner's needle, which is a needle that, or it's also called a straw needle, which is straight. The eye is the same width as the tip. It doesn't have a big bulgy eye in it. Uh, you can do, get those and they work great. If you're going to be doing a lot of French knots, people find those very helpful. This is uh, my favorite needle. It's a chenille needle. Number 20, this one's a number 26, I believe. I also use number 24s, uh, chenille needles interchangeably. And I find they work just fine for French knots. The, the eye is a little bit larger, but it's not so big and round that it, it really prevents you from uh, going through the knot. So let me show you one more French knot, and then we'll move on to actually working on the flower. One, two, three, go down, slide that knot towards the fabric, a little bit of tension, pull it through, and there you go. There's one other stitch that we're going to be using on the center part of the flower, and it is the classic chain stitch. Now, this one is a really good stitch to have in your toolbox of stitches. Um, lots of uses for it. It's fun. So how you make this chain stitch, the chain stitch is that you come up through the fabric. You're, again, you're gonna hold your thread out of the way and go back down pretty close, if not really kind of in the same hole that you came up in. Now I have a knot on the back, so it's sometimes I have to move that knot out of the way so I don't spear the knot on the back side. So anyway, I've gone down right in the same hole or really, really, really close to it. I'm going to hold this thread out of the way. And I'm not going to pull it all the way through, but I'm going to hold a loop right there. 
Now I forgot to draw my pattern line, so let's just say, for instance, this is the line I was trying to follow, just so that's clear. All right, so there's my loop. I'm going to come up a stitch length away, come up inside that hoop, and pull the thread until that little loop makes the first chain. So now I have come up inside that loop. I'm going to do the same thing over and over and over. I go right back down, right in the same place where that thread came up, hold the loop out of the way, come up inside that loop, and pull it until it forms the stitch. Now the key to chain stitching is the tension on this loop. Sorry, it's hard to keep my hand out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. If you pull it too tight, it makes a very skinny little stitch and it's hard to see the rounded shape of that loop. And if you make it too loose, it just is wonky and every stitch doesn't look the same. So pull it slowly enough so that you get a nice little little teardrop shaped loop. But other than that, really, it's, a, it's an easy stitch. It just takes a little bit of patience, a little bit of just be gentle with it. And we're going to use this stitch right on the, as the inner ring on the inside of the center, right underneath the uh, the turkey work that we're going to do. But I'll show you that a little bit later. So that's the last stitch we need. So now it's time to start working on the center of the flower. Time to work on the center of the flower. I changed my mind from when I was talking just a little bit ago, and this is three strands of black DMC thread. I do not have a knot in the end, just like I mentioned, because I am going to start on the top. So whereas before in the little demonstration I was working in a straight line, now we're going to be working around in a circle, a curved line. But it's really just exactly the same thing. So you can start anywhere. I'm going to start right here. Go down. And leave that tail. Hold it out of the way. Make a locking stitch. A little hard to see right all that black thread. Make your locking stitch to hold that thread in place. All right, now come up right next to there. Let me see. All right. Hold a loop. Go down right next to the previous stitch. Hold your loop longer than you want the ending fringe, the resulting fringe to be, and lock that in place. You do want to hold on to the loop when you're coming back up because it's easy to yank that loop all the way through unless you're holding on to it. So again, come up. Black thread is really hard to see what you're doing. That's why I did pink thread for the demonstration. It's really hard to see what's going on. Hold a loop. Hold it in place. And this is where I was talking about you really want to hold the thread right here. Because when you make this little locking stitch, sometimes it's easy to, like right here, you can just yank it all the way through. But because I'm holding that loop, it doesn't go anywhere. So I'm going to do that all the way around this edge. And I'm working right up next to the very outside circle that I drew, right where the um, needle painting ends. So I'm going to go around and make all of these loops. And I will speed that up for you so you don't have to just watch me do this endlessly. Oops. Oh, of course, I got it caught on the back. All right, well, I got to go fix that knot, too. <laughs> okay, I'll be back in a minute.
you can see I have finished the first row of the turkey work, the fringe stitch. I've left the loops. Coincidentally, I also ran out of thread just at exactly the right time. So I will knot that and I will start a new thread, a new black thread with three strands. And before I trim this, I will come back and I will do another uh, row of the same exact thing right, right snugged up right next to that first row that I just did, just like that. So I will do that and I won't make you watch that. I'll come back and I'll show you what it's, what that looks like when I'm all finished with it. I've finished my two rows of loops and uh, you can see I didn't follow the inside ring just exactly this, uh, ex exactly the way it looked, but that's okay. I was just really trying to snug those, um, that second row of stitches right up against the first row. So I've left plenty of length here and now I can trim them off. And to be honest, I'm probably going to do this where you, well, let me try. It's easier if you're kind of hand holding the, the hoop so you can move it around. But you can see I'll just start trimming. I'm going to decide about how long I want it to be. And then I'll go back up and I'll clean it up. I don't want to cut it too short because then I'd have to, if it's just way too short, I'd have to go back and rip it out and do it again. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to carefully trim this and I will come back and show you what it looks like then. I have now trimmed up the center, the the ring of black thread that I uh, did the turkey work with, the fringe stitch. I see a couple little stitches right there that didn't get quite short enough. Uh, and you can see this is what I decided on. This is how long I decided to make them. I had it a little longer at first and it just was too overwhelming. And I just kept giving it a little bit more of a trim. I didn't try to be, they don't have to be perfectly even. Uh, you know, a flower is not completely perfect, so that's fine. Um, I wanted to mention that, you know, after you cut all this, you're going to have little fuzzies everywhere. So a good trick to get rid of those on your fabric is to take a piece of tape like this and you can just stick it on the fabric and just lightly pick up all those little random fuzzy things that just won't seem to get off your, and you can even see when you, I don't know if you can see that, all that black thread that it picked up. So that's one little tip. I do want to caution you to be careful when you are trimming this. Uh, these are really small scissors. They're really, really sharp. And so just have, be really careful you're not accidentally uh, picking up little stitches of the thread painting behind it. You don't want to snip any of those or the outline stitches. Little scissors are going to be easier to trim that off. I mean, you can use... Uh, these are really nice... Uh, super sharp little embroidery scissors. I have scissors like this as well, which are Fiskars. They're a little bit bigger, but those would work too. Uh, these are right here. These are like a for scrapbooking, and I those are really sharp. Those would work too. I mean, you can use the big scissors, but it's just a little unwieldy when you're trying to uh, be very precise when you're trimming off that that black thread. Now, I changed my mind. I originally had said, I think I said I was going to use six strands for the black thread, and I it was just going to be too much. So I went with two rows of three strands of black thread for each row. So I did the outside ring with three strands, and then I did the inside ring with three strands, and then I trimmed it off. Now, let's move on to the next row. I have also changed my mind about that. I know I, my original plan was to do another row, another two rows of the turkey work. But I started thinking about it and I just realized it's going to be really, really hard. I was going to trim it off shorter than the black. So you had like a really short row of fringe and then a longer row of black fringe. That's just going to be really hard to trim that little short row without clipping any of these black threads. So what I decided to do was to do something a little bit easier that doesn't require any trimming. I am going to do just a simple chain stitch, I think one row of chain stitch in this yellow thread. The color chart will show you which color. And this is three strands of the yellow and just a nice simple chain stitch. Let me start right here. 
So to do a chain stitch, you come up, I'm going to hold that thread out of the way, go down right where you came up, to hold that knot out of the way in the back, all right, and then pull through and hold a loop right there. Now I can already tell this is going to be a little tricky not to catch that fringe in there, So, but I'm going to hold a loop out of the way, and of course it wants to twist. I know my fingers are in the way. All right, so I'm going to hold that loop out of the way and I'm going to come up just a stitch length away inside that loop. I'm going to pull it up and then carefully ooh, keep all that black thread out of the way. A little bit tricky. So you can see as I pull it, there I've made the first stitch. Now I'm going to do another stitch. I'm going to go, same thing, down right where I came up. Hold that loop out of the way. Get all those little black threads out of the way. It's going to be a little more challenging than your usual chain stitch. There we go. So hold that out of the way. Come up inside that loop. I'm going to continue to hold that loop. I know I'm blocking it a little bit with my finger until I kind of get out of the way of the black threads and then pull it. So I will just keep working around the entire ring just right along the edge of the base of those black stitches. The edge of the fringe stitch, the turkey work that I did earlier. All right, so let me keep working around there and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. Okay, I just finished up doing that chain stitch, and uh, maybe you could have you could tell, but if not, I pretty much every single stitch I had to very I had to work slowly and then very carefully tease out these little black threads that wanted to sneak inside of each chain stitch. So it's a little bit slower going than if you were trying to if you were not working right up next to that fringe, that black fringe. But it all worked out, and I think it's really was going to be much easier than trying to do another row or two rows of the turkey stitch. So let me go switch my threads out and then the last thing we're going to do for this part is do the French knots here fill in the center. I've done a few French knots here already in one color. For the colors uh, of the French knots that we're doing in the center I'm just doing all, I'm using all the colors we used in the leaves, the two greens and the three blues and then just I'm going to make random knots with each color. So I started with this first color here. It's the darkest blue. I'm using three strands and I'm going to wrap each knot twice. I just um, just started putting some random ones and now I'm just going to fill in more with this next color of this this lighter blue. And similar to the when I was working on the chain stitch, you have to really go a little bit slow and be careful that you don't catch those black threads in right particularly right here as you're pulling the thread through those little black fringy threads want to get caught up in the knot but as I mentioned in the video about how to do French knots I'm just gonna come up wrap twice keep the tension on that a little bit of tension put my needle down in slide that knot towards the fabric go down pull it through okay you can see there how I'm getting some black thread. So before I pull it all the way through, I'm just going to carefully get those things out of the way and then move on. That's the only really thing that makes that a little trickier than just your average French knot. It's trying to keep those black threads out of the way. And there's some more. So what I'll do is I'll go through with each color until I just think I have enough. I'll kind of pile them on top of each other a little bit even, put them like right in between. Just to use all, what is it, five colors until I've completely covered this whole center section with just sort of an even variety of each color. So that's all there is to it. I'll keep working on this and then for 
Let me see. It'll be our last part, part five, next time. Going to be really simple. All we have to work on, all we have to finish up is these little twiggy branches on the sides, and those are going to be really easy. And then we will be done. So I hope you will join me, join me then for part five. And I hope you had fun on part four. All right, I'll see you next time.